to show you the latest acquisition I got from eBay. This is a uh, component tester, test resistance, capacity, and inductance, but it does so much more. And then I'll show you. It'll do tell you transistors. It'll check transistors. Here's a transistor I'll stick in there. You put it in the ZIF connector, any old place you want. Push the button. Heck, you pay. This costs fourteen dollars. Shows you what kind of transistor, the basing, so you can tell where the base emitter collector are, and a little about the uh, DC parameters, uh, beta and VF, uh, base emitter voltage, to get the sucker to turn on. Pretty cool. Uh, it's nowhere near like uh, it would replace a real curve tracer, but just to get an idea of what that transistor is in your junk box and where the uh, co collect connections are, what the uh, basing is, is a big help. There's another transistor. That is a uh, in-channel, I mean, a, uh, a, a yeah, an in-channel JFET. It even draws a little picture of it for you. It gives you some of the basic DC parameters. Pretty cool. Uh, I've made little testers that do this kind of DC test before. It's not that big a deal, except <laughs> drawing the nice little graphics and having it smart enough to not really pay attention to what polarity you use. So it does all that housekeeping for you. But they have never got one that uh, worked with the Darlington transistor. And here's a Darlington. It tells you it's a NPN transistor, tells you base emitter collector. But you can tell it's a Darlington because look at that humongous uh, beta you know, beta square, two transistors, and uh, a double uh, double junction, uh, a base emitter, uh, uh, two, two diodes there, so it's a volt, a little more than a volt. So that is a, di a, a Darlington. It's not smart enough to tell you it's a Darlington. Uh, we'll try another kind of transistor. It's a big old power transistor. Now, this thing only will not test this thing fully, of course, but it does give you an idea. What in the world is that big old transistor I got in my junk box? Just a quick test. Oh, it's an in-channel MOSFET uh, enhancement mode. Uh, there's the basing and whatever. And it's a power thing, a whole lot of capacity. Uh, anyway, and even got, it's got VT for you. <laughs> okay, not bad. It even draws a little circuit for you. The other day I was building a little oscillator, a little uh, Colpitz oscillator. I've got a uh, spectrum analyzer I was playing with and I wanted a a dirty oscillator. I got lots of clean oscillators. I wanted a dirty one. So I built a little circuit kind of, you know, kind of one of these things. And I couldn't get that sucker to, uh, to work. Uh, I tried all kind of, I played, you know, different, I put emitter resistors and different, uh, but I just couldn't get it to work. And finally just gave up. So that's uh, going to other something else. And when I got this little tester, I decided to drag out that transistor and see what it was. I had, uh, dug this transistor out of my box of uh, JFETs. I figured it's just another JFET. Well, I put it in here. Oh, no wonder it didn't work. Uh, SCR thyristors aren't quite the same as, as JFETs. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, it'll do diodes. Let's stick a diode on here. What's nice is that uh, sometimes you get these diodes, you don't know what the hell they are. Uh, you can't tell where the emitter, where the uh, cathode is. Or the, uh, you can't tell, can't find the little band. And so you stick it in here, and it'll. Uh, of course, you can do this with a voltmeter, but this is kind of fun. Fourteen bucks. It'll draw a circuit for you, and uh, tells you it's a, a silicon diode, and uh, there's where the uh, cathode and emitter are. Cathode and anode. And we'll stick another diode in here. This one we can tell. What the, uh, well, in fact, we'll just kind of demonstrate that. We'll put the stripe, which is a cathode, we'll put it on uh, pin, uh, if I can get it in here, pin three. Just, just because I can put it on pin three. So pin one and pin three. And we'll push the little button. Boom. Come on. Oh, what's going on? There we go. See, pin three is the cathode. And notice the voltage drop. It's 0.3 volts. That's because it is a germanium diode. And now, uh, comparing this to the uh, all-electronics uh, meter, which measures uh, reactants and not diodes, um, this does not measure things in real time. That is, 
you push the button and wait for the answer. Uh, so it is not good for testing variable components and watching them change, but it is does a good good job as just a fixed value. I don't know what frequency is testing these uh, reactances at, but here's a capacitor. This is a 47 uh, nano hit nan nanofarad capacitor. It's marked on 47 and it's 46, so it's doing a good, good job. Compared to the all electronics, all these little components like that, it, it very, pretty much measures the same because it's more or less the same technology. It's putting a pulse in and measuring rise time, fall times, decays, something. Uh, however, the all electronics does a much better job at lower values. This only measures down to 25 puff. The all electronics will go to 10 puff. So a little better on the low end. It also will measure in real time. Uh, you can get a trimmer and tweak on it and it'll change show the values uh, however on the high end of things this thing is uh, vastly has a huge range this thing will measure up to a hundred thousand microfarads <laughs> tenth of a farad uh, and I'll stick I've got a big old hunker in here I'll, I'll show you what I got after I get the leads in I soldered some leads on it because it was just too big to stick in there so I've got a big old cap like this. This is uh, 2,000 microfarads. And uh, I think it's beyond what the uh, all electronics would do. And uh, this seems to be pretty independent of polarity. So it says 3,000. You know, close enough for what this is. This says ESR again. That's probably meaningless. Uh, your, this thing probably got three or four volts across it, maybe eight volts. Uh, so, but it does give you an idea. It's kind of fun. And uh, on the inductor side, again, it's the same thing as the uh, all electronics. At the low end, this thing is not real good for low value inductors. For instance, it would not measure that inductor where the all electronics uh, laughs at this. There's no problem. You can get this and squeeze it and pull it apart with the all electronics and it will show those changes. This thing will show this as a short circuit. It just does not do good at low values. Uh, but uh, at above, uh, it's rated down to 10 microhenries. And this guy is, you know, I don't know, picohenries. But it does good on the bigger ones. Like this guy here, uh, it has no problem on measuring these pi uh, RF chokes. There's a couple of millihenries, I think. We'll know in a minute, won't we? But uh, what's kind of cool about this is you don't really have to tell you what you're measuring. You just stick the leads in and push the button and it figures it out. Boom, 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 boom. Come on, there we go. Yeah, two millihenries. 2.7. I don't know, 2.2 is what it's rated at. It also does, it does good. It goes to 10 henries or 20 henries. Freaking thing can measure a, one of those old uh, inductors on those old input capacity input or inductor input filters back in the day. You remember? 5Y3s and things. This, I think, is a uh, uh, 88 millihenry telephone coil from days, days of old. And uh, if I can get the leads in there, it may not get the leads in, so we don't just have to trust me it measures it okay. It may not be making good contact. Yeah, it did. 82 millihenries. And I measured this at, at, at work on a, uh, a, 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 a good uh, inductance meter at about 10 kilohertz, and it measured 75 millihenries. Uh, you know, I had a, a, a true piece of electronics and measured uh, 75, and this is 82, so for a $14. Uh, resistance is pretty obvious. However, this is kind of cool with resistance. I want to show you this. Um, It'll measure really high values. It goes up to uh, uh, 50 meg, and I can stick a. I've got a 20 meg, and it'll it'll just read 20 meg. So it'll trust me on that, because uh, you're getting bored. But I do want to show you this before you uh, go to sleep. Uh, this is a uh, one ohm resistor. What's kind of interesting is we we'll stick a one ohm in there. Come on, baby. 1.3 ohms. Now that's pretty good for something to measure one ohm and to say one ohm and not yeah. about. What about make it even harder? We'll measure it 
Let's see if it'll measure half an ohm. So we got to stick a half ohm resistor in here. I've never used a half ohm resistor on anything, but you know, whatever. I've got a hundred of them if you want one. Half an ohm. Cool. Point, well, point five four. Now, this thing may be kind of really kind of goofy. What will it do if we really put a zero ohm resistor? And here's really a zero ohm resistor. This is uh, one of those zero ohm resistors they do in pick and place machines so they can, for, for jumpers, but it is zero ohms. And this thing says 0.2, 0 0.02 ohms. That's probably the resistance of the lead shaking it, scratch it around a little, it'll get rid of that O2. So anyway, so it went up. <laughs> uh, this cost, uh, oh, I put a Zener diode in there. Now, of course, the voltage is not very high. This thing only runs on a 9-volt battery, but a Zener diode has showed us two back-to-back -back diodes, one with a forward voltage of uh, 0.7 volts, with the other with a reverse voltage of, and I put about a 3-volt uh, Zener in there, and it showed a reverse voltage of about 2.5 volts. So it shows Zeners as back-to-back -back diodes, and... Uh, uh, but only go up to a few volts. I wouldn't trust it for anything like that. Again, it's just a go no go kind of tester, and for 14 bucks, you, you can't go you can't go wrong. So enjoy. Well, uh, uh, that's good enough. You get the idea. Anyway, it's great fun. So long.